welcome to this short service of Midweek Holy Communion. We are at the moment very much in the season of Easter. In the church's calendar, Easter doesn't end once Easter Sunday is over, but it continues for four or five weeks up until Ascension Day. So for the next few weeks, our readings and our prayers will be very much on the theme of Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that happened uh, around that story. So let's begin our short service together this morning, shall we? We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. As usual, we begin our service with the time of confession of sin. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father, but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light on our path, but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect now. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Soon afterwards he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favourably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So that story is uh, quite a dramatic one, isn't it? Of a man being raised back to life by Jesus. But it's also a very uh, tender and compassionate story as Jesus is walking with his disciples towards this town called Nain and coming in the opposite direction towards him and his disciples is this large group of people Uh, which is a a widow who's lost her husband and now she's lost her only son, who is described as being a young man. So she's in some state of uh, sadness and grief. And Jesus says to her, please don't cry. And he puts his hand onto the bier or the coffin and the whole procession stops and he raises the man back to life and gives him to his mother. It's a wonderful story. And of course, At this time of year, at Easter, we traditionally tend to read not only the stories about the resurrection of Jesus from the four Gospels, but also the stories from other parts of the Bible where Jesus brings people back to life. And I think there are three such examples in the New Testament, of which this is one, and there are also several in the Old Testament. And of course, uh, when Jesus raised people back to life, it was a wonderful thing. It was a tremendous miracle. But much more important than that, really, was that it was always a sign to the people watching that the kingdom of God had arrived 
and also that it was a sign pointing forward to something really important that was going to happen in the future. And these uh, examples of where people were brought back to life were really pointers pointing towards the future resurrection of Jesus himself, who was going to be tried, would die on a cross, and then rise again back to life on the third day, and the tomb would be empty. So these are signs of what was going to come. And of course, some people refer to the raising of this young man from the dead as a resurrection. I think that's probably not the way, the best way to describe it. Because this young man was brought back to life by Jesus, but presumably at some point later in the future, he once again died and uh, he didn't come back to life again. He died and that was it. With Jesus, of course, it's quite different. Jesus came back from the dead in a new resurrection body and his resurrection meant that he was going to live forever and he would die no more. He defeated death for everyone once and for all. So these stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament where people are brought back to life, they're amazing miracles, but they're not really resurrections. They're perhaps best described as resuscitations, people being brought back from the dead. The true resurrection, which those stories point towards, is really quite different because Jesus came back from the dead to die no more. He defeated death once for all so that we and all those around us this morning have no need to be afraid of death because we know that death is not the end but simply the gateway into something new and that's the wonderful hope and the truth about Easter which we will be celebrating today and for the next few weeks. A wonderful glorious, hopeful time in the church's calendar. So as we reflect on this story of the raising to life of the widow of Nain's son, it reminds us once again of the wonderful truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we come to our intercessions. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we pray that the message of Easter and the wonderful message that Jesus has been raised from the dead and has defeated death will be spread abroad to everyone in our community and throughout the whole world. This wonderful, amazing truth which can bring change and transformation to people, we pray that the power of that message will, be, will reach many, many people this Easter season. And we pray for our own role in sharing that message with others. Give us the boldness and the courage we need to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all the ongoing effects of the coronavirus crisis. We continue to pray for the rollout of the vaccination programme. And we commit into you, Lord, uh, the recent uh, difficulties perhaps with the uh, AstraZeneca virus and its possible linking with uh, blood clots and we pray that that rare side effect will not affect the vaccination process in any way. We continue to pray for all those who work for the NHS that you would give them the strength and the patience that they need to continue with their work we pray for other countries around the world where the COVID-19 crisis is still raging. I think of particularly uh, many of our European neighbours across the Channel where lockdown has been reintroduced in France and in Italy in particular. And we think also of Brazil where the problems are still very serious. And we pray for those whose uh, livelihoods has been affected too. As we begin to open up our economy again next week, we pray for all those who will be restarting work. And we pray for those who maybe are feeling that perhaps the damage has been too great to their businesses and they may be, they may be forced to close. And give to us all, Lord, a sense of, uh, or, of or, or, the, or common sense that as we continue to open up, we will keep to the guidelines and that this uh, 
epidemic will continue to die down in this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray especially too this morning for the family of Colin Hall, who sadly died at the weekend. We thank you for all that Colin did for St Lawrence Church, for his witness to his family and friends. And we pray for them this morning. And we also pray for the family and friends of the young man whose body was found in the lake at Epping Forest yesterday. That you would bring comfort and peace to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for any we know in any kind of need this morning. And in our hearts we, we name them before you and ask that your presence and your peace would rest upon them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray too for our own personal needs, whatever they may be. We commit to you, Lord, things that may be worrying us or causing us some fear and anxiety. And we also thank you for the many good gifts that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the words of the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So now we come to uh, the Eucharistic prayer. And if you'd like to join in with the responses in the appropriate places, that would be good. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and with all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ 
and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last, with St Lawrence and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And now, as usual, I will take the bread and the wine on behalf of all of us this morning. Now the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So that brings us very nearly to the end of our service this morning. Thank you very much for joining me uh, and I hope you have a good day. Uh, Kingsley is, as you probably know, away at the moment, back in Ghana. So I will see you again on Sunday morning for our Holy Communion service at 10.30 on uh, Facebook Live. So you can tune in and watch that if you want to. So let's finish our service now with the final prayer and blessing. God our Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.